Greetings, darklings, from across the interweb. It is once again I, the Duchess Precious Ken, here for the Sounds and Shadows podcast. I'm excited today. Um, we are going to be talking uh, to an artist that's a little on the fringe of the dark scene genre for a lot of the things I cover. So I think it'll be really good to kind of touch on that. Um, before we get started, though, I did want to do an announcement. I saw something pretty exciting the other day. Um, our dear friend, Curse Mackey from the show and Rona Roghart that we've had on of Sign um, have gotten together with legend himself, David J of Bauhaus uh, and many other things, Love and Rockets, and, uh, but uh, put together a new project called Siva, Sha <laughs> Shiva Saves. Wow, that was a tongue twister there. Um, but David J is going to be doing vocals and bass, Curse doing vocals and synth and programming, and Rona's going to be uh, singing as well and doing drums and synths. Uh, it has uh, Nick Zinner from the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs, uh, Elaine White, uh, who's worked with Morrissey, um, just a, a ton of names on this. And it just seems like a really cool, really interesting um, project. So I am geeked for that. And I'll be giving you more details as they uh, arise. Now, without further ado, um, from Los Angeles, um, I have here with me Morning Star, if that's how you put it, because it, it has like the cool witch house uh, lettering in it always. Um, mm -hmm. But Sam is here with me now. Sam, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Ken. I'm absolutely stoked to be here. Yeah, I, I've seen you a bit posting and talking in the Sounds and Shadows group. So um, we've interacted a little that way. And I've had a couple of reviews of some of the uh, previous albums you did. But you have something new out, I, I think is really exciting and, and was a bit of a different swing for you. So I want to get into talking about that. But I always like to start out for maybe some of our viewers that aren't as familiar with your music and your project. Tell me a little bit of your history. What was kind of that moment where, I don't know, you saw a show, you heard an album, Satan reached down his furry paw and put his cloven <laughs> hoof upon thine head. Something happened where this, this dark aesthetic and ideal uh, came to you and you said, this is me. Tell me a little bit about how that ball got rolling. Well, uh, I've kind of always been interested in uh, black metal. Um, and many years ago I was in a band, um, uh, and then I had left that project and started a direction towards uh, producing and doing vocals within, uh, darker electronic music. Yeah. Um, and I would say like it was, uh, October of 2018 that I discovered this uh, genre called witch house, you know, and at the time I never heard of this or anything like that, but I started listening to this artist from Germany called flesh who is an incredible producer. And I, I heard this one song called I come from Salem and I'm like, you know what, this is exactly what I want to do, you know? And then after that, I came across a whole bunch of others, you know, sidewalks and skeletons, who's not only a good friend of mine, but one of my good, you know, my, one of my uh, top influences actually. Uh, and I kind of started to go into like an kind of an interesting, very niche sound. Um, although all those songs are no longer available. Um, but I, I think it was really like the winter of 2020 that I really wanted to change my uh, direction of sound and really just aesthetic um, overall. Um, I, I uh, befriended uh, this uh, black metal vocalist. Uh, he, he lives out of Michigan. Uh, uh, Our home stomping grounds here. Oh, yo, you guys are out of Michigan? Yeah, I'm a Michigan guy. Oh, nice, nice. I actually, uh, I haven't really been out there yet. I, I'm going out there this August, so I'm... Very curious to see how it is. Nice. But, where are you going to see that? Where are they? What city are they in? Oh, Kalen? Oh, I'm not really sure. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I think I think Grand Rapids. I'm not. I'm well, not. Well, that's familiar. right out by me too. Yeah. Oh nice. no way. Yeah. I'm I'm not really familiar with uh, Michigan. You know, uh, right. not yet at least. So um, but I uh, you know befriended him. Uh, he's actually the vocalist of a black metal band called Hexablad, who has become one of my influences yeah. as well. Uh, please check them out. They're drop. They're about to drop an amazing album. Um, I now know the Caleb that you're talking about, and yes, it is Grand Rapids. Oh, it is. Okay, cool. Yes, yeah, so I got that right. So, um, uh, and he was, you know, he got me onto a lot of really great black metal bands that I never really heard about. I'm like, you know what? Like, 
And me personally, I like to do things that no one's really ever done before, especially when it comes to music, you know. And when it comes to Witch House, it's it's been called the black metal of EDM. If you really (laughs) think about it, you know, the obscurities and all, you know. So I'm like, you know what? Like no one has made blackened Witch House yet. And I'm going to pioneer this, you know. So I started experimenting with a coarse paint throughout that winter. And I kind of got the, you know, kind of got like a beginning kind of sound of what I have now. Um, yeah. It's very still, I consider very different to what I just released. Um, but I would experiment all through that year, you know, and then uh, both musically and aesthetically. And then I don't. I don't think I really found my true sound until I had released uh, Dreaming of the Damned uh, just about actually two years ago this month. Okay. Uh, and uh, to this day, it's actually my top single, which I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful for. Um, but as you know, I went with a musically a little bit of a different direction with my first album, which you had kindly reviewed uh, actually that same year, uh, The New Salem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but after that album was out, I would have to say that um, I wanted to go in a very different direction, especially with sound. Um, and I kind of started experimenting um, in later 2022 uh, with some sound. And that was actually the first one that I did after Dreaming of the Damned uh, when it comes to the, new, the what I call the newer sound is uh, – the withered one, which is actually on my latest album in memoriam of the black wind. Right. Um, but when I had moved down to Los Angeles in, uh, um, November of 2022, that's when like, I just went full hammer on, um, sticking with the sound of the withered one. And I got probably my favorite thing that I've ever written so far. That that's incredible, and like I said, I'm really excited to kind of talk about this because I've inter- I've interviewed Jacob on there and, and sidewalks and skeletons, but I haven't had a lot of witch house artists on, and it's a kind of music that I mean, for being a 46 year old dude, the more I hear of it, the more I like it. Like it really, yeah. I don't know, has spoken to me since I gave it a chance, mm-hmm. and I, I think it is something that is going to be a big part of the future of kind of the goth scene going forward. Mm-hmm. Um, so how do you feel like, you know, because you coming from, yeah, definitely a metal background. And I hear that in your music a lot. I would even call in particular, say versus sidewalks and skeletons, you know, as a different kind of witch house, which I don't know, would gear to me more like a blend of shoegaze and some other things oh, yeah. in it, mm-hmm. where you kind of more have this, you know, dark metal, but I would say also a very cinematic sound like your songs are builders that to me are meant to evoke an image in your head or kind of play a movie for me when I'm hearing it. So I kind of wondered how much, you know, looking behind you, you know, the corpse paint that you do, I've seen when you're playing live, the Mm -hmm. posters behind you does I don't know, like horror movies play a huge part in your inspiration for your music. And if so, tell me about some of the ones that are biggest, you know, the biggest deal to you. Oh, absolutely. Um, I actually grew up more on um, horror movies and old monster films rather than cartoons. Um, Nice. And um, I I would definitely say that Nosferatu, the original 1922 version, has had a massive effect on me just overall it just goes beyond music and uh begotten which was actually like one of the last uh well people are still making silent horror films are just not like big you know but i would say the begotten is like the last like big one that was really made um the director who made uh shadow of the vampire uh directed uh, begotten back in 1990 and I mean, we all know the GIF that go the GIF image that goes around yeah. like the internet. You know, it's the scene of you know God commits suicide, and uh, I remember seeing that all the time. I'm like, you know what? Like, I see this all the time. I gotta check this out. You know, and then I saw the trailer uh, on YouTube. Uh, and my, mind you, this is this is a time when the movie, the the DVD itself, would just cost like ninety dollars. It was that rare. Now you. You can find like 50, 50 streamable copies on Amazon, sure. on, on fucking uh, YouTube. 
and then um and then you can just find the dvd for like 20 bucks somewhere you know now it's, it's so much more distributed than like you know 10 years ago uh which is great uh but and i think it's become a bit less niche you know, like the, the mm-hmm. horror yeah. concept has blown up so much that now a lot of people that maybe wouldn't have before are looking back at some of those early classics and I don't know, embracing the idea of kind of like in music, the, mm-hmm. the grittier film, the how that adds into horror. To me, I'm the same way. Some of my favorite horror is like Vincent Price, oh, you know, too. things like that, where I don't need to see the ghost. I need to see the curtains rustle. Yes. And then I start looking around my own house like, wait, did I just feel a chill? Am I, ha- <laughs> you know, is this happening here too? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I love Vincent Price too, you know, but I, yeah. I would, uh, you know, and even uh, this, the uh, cinematic, the uh, cinematography of uh, Begotten, if you, have you seen Begotten yet? Um, I don't know. I don't think I've seen that one yet. Check it out. Um, I will. But um yeah, like the cinematography of it actually inspired me to like, that's how I kind of film music videos. Like I, I film my own music videos, um, oh, the scenes like that I'm not in, like the scenes that I have in, like I luckily I have like um, some people who are able to help me with that. Sure. But, um, Living out in L.A., I imagine there's, uh, you know, makeup artists, uh, productions, uh, plenty out there to to know that are real pros. So. Oh, definitely. But uh, personally, I, I do my all my own makeup. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm. Like, I mean, not doubting anyone else's skill, but uh, <laughs> sure. I, I know what I want and uh, I'm able to get it done pretty quick, uh, thankfully. So, yeah. So tell me a little bit then for this new album when kind of, I don't know, it it does. It has a grittiness to it, along mm-hmm. with kind of that glitchy witch house sound. Um, was there any new tech or, you know, plugins, anything like that, that you started using fresh for this record that you feel like really became important to the sound you were trying to create? I can't express this enough. Uh, I, so back in May of last year, I think was really when I started to get the most like immersed in black metal and it's all of its adjacent genres, you know? Yeah. Like more than ever in my entire life and um i discovered this uh plugin called black metal keys and it has changed everything for me sound like just in, just it, it the plugin itself just inspires me let, let me just put it that way you know <laughs> um and uh I mean, at first, you know, it was like kind of hard to because it was like, is it like the the installation was a little like uh, unconventional, you know, not like illegal or anything. It's just like you had to go through a lot of steps. It just seems so weird, you know. But luckily, like I was able to get it and I got it. Uh, I started playing it and I'm like, you know what? Like, this is incredible, you know, because uh, before, like, um, I don't know, like when it came to like mixing and mastering, like things just didn't really sound, it didn't sound complete, if that makes sense. You know, it felt, it, sure. things felt like they were always missing most of the time for some of my previous releases prior to this album, you know? And I'm like, okay, something's just missing here. But now like I'm able to add like, a, you know, just like what I call like, a, you know, rhythm sense, you know, like, you know, like in regular instrument, like band instrumentals, Sure. You have leads, rhythm, bass, that, you know, drums, all that, you know. Now I can kind of go through the same formula, like with my songs, like all thanks to this uh, plugin. And it's it's made a tremendous difference. Now, so obviously doing black metal, to me, when I think of that, mm. a big part of it, you know, kind of your double bass drum, your like real thundering toms, your, uh, you know, uh, overdriven guitar sound, things like that are are quintessential to that. So how does that translate when you're trying to pull those elements into electronic drums and more keyboards and whatnot? Obviously, you're kind of saying this plugin uh, helps to do that. But mm-hmm. how do you maintain that core to make this feel like black metal still when trying to burst into something new? Uh, that's kind of a hard, hard question, but I, I would have to say like, I mean, 
do you think, I guess, maybe are the the themes there partially because of what you're doing with the lyrics, what you're doing vocally, where that's what transitions over to it so that necessarily it's not so much about the sound, but more about kind of the ideas that you use in black metal? Oh, I see. Well, I, I honestly get inspired from a lot of this music that I listen to, um, you know, um, and themes that I come across, like, or, you know, movies and such like that. So, like, I'll, um, I'll just, like, get an idea in my head and think of a pattern. And I'm like, you know what? Like, and I'll usually it's when I'm driving in my car, like, and I'm just, like, listening to, like, my black metal playlist on Apple Music, you know, I'm like, you know what? Like, this is a this is like a really cool song and it kind of like it, like I don't know I, I, it's hard to explain I guess you know I just I get these ideas in my head from just listening to a single song you know or like a kind of a theme from like a song and I'm like you know what like that'll be really cool for a song I'll make and then I'll just come home um, later on or I'll just like write it down and get to it that week when I have some time um, but. Do you have maybe an example of a song on the new album where, I don't know, you were watching a movie the night before or like you said, you were driving, you know, in L.A. listening to something and it it just hit you um, where that translated over to a song that is on the album now? I actually have a perfect example, but it didn't really come from a movie. Uh, it came from a meme of all things. OK, I'm sure I'm sure you've seen. um you know, some black metal means where it's like, you know, the, you know, the girl screaming at her boyfriend. She's like, baby, you better not be romanticizing your, your melancholic solitude again or something like that. I, I have it. That, I've seen the meme, <laughs> not that version of it, but OK. So I saw that and I saw it so much in the past two years. I'm like, you know what? I have to make a song just with that title, romanticizing my melancholic solitude, you know. And at first it was going to include lyrics, but I'm like, you know what? Like, I think this just, it, it just sounds like a really cool instrumental idea, you know? So nice. it's got like a, a lower octaved um, choir, like, and then like a rhythmic synth bass and the leads are, is just a, an, or like a pipe organ, you know? Ooh. And, uh, and then like, uh, I add like secondary leads with, uh, like a saw synth with like blast beats, you know, it's actually one of my favorite like instrumentals that I've written, but, um, yeah, I think, I think, uh, that was definitely a must, you know, cause, okay. <laughs> I tell people like, take your like, you know, music and career seriously. But when it comes to black metal, like it's not all serious. It's, it's a lot of joking around and shit. So I felt that was very necessary for the vibe when it comes to the new album. I, you won't get any argument from me as a uh, singer for a goth band that sings about ninjas and ass play on a regular basis. Uh, we, we don't take ourselves too seriously um, <laughs> that's in quite spite of uh, being goth. So no, I, yeah. and it's funny. I think that's generally true. You know, I've interviewed so many artists now and things like that, that I'm always surprised that almost all of them are just as silly as I am until you oh, yeah. get up on stage and you're like, and my heart weeps the darkness, you know, but like mm -hmm. in real life, you know, you, you can't do that all the time. You express oh, no, no. that to get it out so that you don't have to live it all the time, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah, that's, that's <laughs> actually what I love about uh DSBM, you know, cause like, I mean, it's, if you think about it, like DSBM is, it's just, it's, it's pure art to me, you know? Well, you, you know what DSBM is, right? No. Okay. It's depressive, suicidal, black metal. It's a subgenre of black oh, metal. Okay. But, you, know, you know, I honestly, I, I am not a big metal dude. I never have been. Colin, our bass player is, mm. but you know, he's kind of the metal influence for Amaranth for sure. Oh, nice. Nice. So anyhow, you were saying uh, the DSP, uh, like, yeah. So I, I, uh, cause like a lot of, a lot of the artists within DSPM like have gone through things or are going through things, go sure. through, going through things to where like, you know, and unfortunately, you know, they will either hurt themselves or like, sure. you know, worse, you know? So, but they're able to express like how they feel through that subgenre of music, you know? So that kind of reminded me of what you just stated. 
No, I, I think that's, I mean, true in a lot of music for artists. I mean, a lot of it is, you know, people who struggle with some very dark thoughts and feelings and need an outlet or a place for that. So I, I do think that's really important. And, and also when you put out it, a song like that or an album like that, and someone else may be going through something, hears it, they don't feel as alone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it resonates in, in your words or what you said. Mm -hmm. So I think that leads uh, nicely into another thing I really wanted to ask you about is, again, looking at the stuff behind you, like the things I've seen on stage for you, your, you know, your vest, the whole the whole bit. Mm -hmm. um, is there kind of a, I don't know, spiritual aspect to this that drew you to dark metal as well in terms of, I don't know, like. Uh, you know, calling yourself the morning star or having that in there, is that kind of uh, a part of your both belief system that then incorporates into the music? Absolutely. Yeah. One thousand percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. how, how does that? I mean, like, do you I mean, if whether it's Satanism or anything else, how does that kind of go into I don't know, you artistically, but also just, you know, your life and how you get through day to day. Um, well, I mean, first and foremost, like I'm a Levian Satanist, you know, but uh, over the years I've become a little more spiritual. Um, sure. But I mean, nothing's ever really going to like sway me from like, le you know, I guess like uh, moving on from Levian Satanism. Like it's, sure. I'd say like it's uh, one of the biggest positive like impacts that's uh been in my life and uh you know it 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 teaches you to believe in yourself and such and uh i think uh satanism and black metal and even witch house and the occult and i think all four of those just they just go hand in hand you know sure and and I think that's one of those things too, you know, where maybe people that aren't as and I'm not a expert in any mm -hmm. uh mean but i i do know enough to know that to me when i think of satanism it's all about taking personal accountability rather mm -hmm. than you know some uh divine bearded dude up there telling you to be good and that's the only reason that you're doing it instead it's more about you taking personal initiative to have a code mm -hmm. and holding yourself accountable to that code because at the end of the day you're the only one that really can Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I believe in, um, you know, if you if you wrong someone, whether it's, uh, you know, intentional or not, you should do whatever you whatever is in your power to rectify the situation, you know? Yeah. Um, like, I mean, me personally, you know, as I get older, like people are going to do what they want to do. But I just believe that, you know, do whatever you want to do. Just don't hurt people, you know? Sure. Do you use that then as kind of a, a theme that you kind of put into your music? And especially when I read through your song titles, that's what really makes me think of it as coming back to, you know, I've read Anton LaVey, you know, things before. And that's where it really kind of rang a resonance for me. I, I would say I would say that uh, when it comes to the like my occult beliefs, you know, including like uh, my beliefs in Satanism, I, I believe it's. A lot more tied with uh, my uh, the new Salem album uh, rather than uh, this uh, most recent one. Sure. Um, I mean, the, the themes are still in there, um, you know, like the memory of a dark forest, you know, like it. It. I was actually I was thinking a lot about, you know, the forests of Eastern Europe, the black forest in Germany when I wrote that song. And a lot of those have like, I mean, you know, pagan roots, you know, which ties sure. to the occult and have some influences in Satanism itself. So. I, I believe when it comes to that things like and those things that um, a lot of those are linked, you know, so whether it's like directly influence of my beliefs in Satanism, like Satanism and the occult always come back to like, no matter what I put out. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to change gears again here. And another aspect I wanted to talk about is you taking this out live. Like I said, I've seen you, you know, kind of do up the the course, uh, corpse paint and the makeup and everything. Mm. How do you think it's important to, because you make your own videos and do that, to kind of put that visual element or that uh, pageantry uh, into a stage show? And what are some of the ways that you've done that? Uh, well, I've, uh, I would say I've studied the theatrics. Um, 
you know, I've, uh, I have looked at, um, live footage of musicians that have heavily inspired me. Um, I mean, I've done that for many years. Um, but I really just studied like more, like, I, I would say like maybe in like the past, uh, six or eight months, I just studied a lot of, uh, general theatrics, you know, like not like necessarily when it came to music, but I would look at old paintings, you know, like, like medieval paintings and such and look at, uh, you know, like I, I love the, the theatrical raised hand, you know, like when, sure. when a note is rising or something like, I love that, you know, what kind of, when you say paint, like a Heronius bot, you know, that type of stuff or, uh, what, what kind of things inspire you? And like when it comes to yeah, when you think of like you you have an image in your head, are there any particular kind of artists or uh, you know whether it's I don't know Renaissance or Romantic or something that that you think of that goes hand in hand with your music? Well, when it comes to uh, um, well, I would say there's two parts to this. You know, non music, I would definitely say like uh, medieval themes. You know, like horror movies. Uh, Renaissance, um, the occult for sure, as we discussed, you know, sure. but, uh, uh, you know, the second part I would, I, I would have to say is, uh, you know, my musical influences, if my, if I may include that. Yeah. So, uh, I was heavily inspired by Dark Throne, like their early, early stuff, um, like the Unholy Trinity, uh, they released back in, uh, from 1991 to 1994. Mm-hmm. I believe, I believe those are the dates. Um, and, uh, the, their first one, when it came to that Trinity was called a blaze in the Northern sky, which actually really pushed me to almost mirror with this past album, because that one is like very winterous cold and the vocals for that album just sound like, uh, Nocturnal Culto, who's the vocalist, who was the vocalist of Dark Throne at the time. Okay. Um, if you listen to his vocals, he, it just sounds like you're in like in the middle of nowhere. There is freezing snow all around you and he in just it's cold vocals, you know? Yeah. And that's like I wanted that theme for this album. Um, and um, I haven't revealed this publicly yet, but In Memoriam of the Black Wind is actually part of a three-part trilogy oh cool yeah so you're wow so it's not even just a uh you know theme album it's it's a trilogy theme it's a it's a continuation that's going to go into three albums total yes that is uh, my plan right now nice well that leads well into the next thing i was going to ask you is what's the future sam for the this project obviously i mean the the trilogy of albums is for it but say we did another interview a year from now so we're talking in march 2025 mm. what is it you want to be talking to me about well i'll be honest it's uh i mean it's going to be a hard one um i think i think that uh i think a good space between albums is uh two years mm. um so it, I, I'm not really. That is, I like that. Like a lot of people now, you know, the modern, it, it's all about, I need to churn out content or everybody will forget about me by tomorrow. You know? I, yeah. And I used to do that. <laughs> in order to, doing that again. to me to put out a, an album that really has meaning a lot, mm. like you kind of talked about when you were discussing the spirituality of it, it takes time to grow and, and gestate. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much different are you going to be? I mean, sometimes we are mm -hmm. different in three months. You can have an event that oh, changes absolutely. you that quick. But for most people, yeah, like even if you start down a path after three months, it takes a couple years to, I don't know, get some wisdom about whatever it is that you were, you know, like growing on and learning on. And then mm -hmm. how do you write about that or express that to someone else until you've had a time to truly comprehend what your journey was on it. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I fully agree with that. That's, I, I think that's uh, one of the top reasons why I, as much as I wanted to get an album out after the new Salem with a completely different sound, that's why I waited and took my time with the writing and, um, 
Because like the original product for In Memory of the Black Wind was, I would say a little, like a lot different than what I had in mind. Uh, than what, not what I had in mind, but what I actually had released. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we, that happens all the time. You start out on one road of kind of where you thought this was going in your head, but once you get going, like you said, whether it's playing around with a plug-in or something else, all of a sudden mm. you find your mind shifting from where you intended, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, um, um, getting back to the influences, uh, uh, influences though, I was actually also inspired by a Zaster which is a uh, DSBM uh, one-man black metal project uh, out in Alhambra, which is uh, close by to here in L.A. Okay. Uh, and then I, like I said earlier, Hexablad. Um, th- I would say that they've have like influenced me heavily, like as well. Uh, the other two is Cybox and Skeletons and Axius Link. Nice. Uh, well, I mean, I like that. That's pretty broad. And again, it it goes well towards, as I said. Um, I don't know the the core sounds I think a lot have been done and what the future holds for most genres is all about synthesis and pulling together ideas to make something new mm-hmm. you know by pulling parts of other things that inspired you or you listened to mm-hmm. um so no I I think that's really great and I think that the world could be hungry for this blending of I don't know, kind of trip hop beats or or whatnot mixed together with dark metal, which Mm. it it does for metal to me when I do think of it, it does have a slower, doomier groove that like actually fits, you know, with kind of uh, when I think of the slipperiness of like trip hop or things like that. So I, I feel like they do go together and are a natural connection. Oh, yeah. Um, and what's interesting with Witch House right now is that a lot of Witch House artists have like been experimenting heavily, I'd say, in the past year with like mixing other genres, you know, like yeah. you see a lot of drum and bass and hard style with uh, Witch House right now. Um, I mean, when, when it comes to hard style within like Witch House, I mean, it's been around for a while. I know the Club Cedra, he's out in Europe. Uh, he did a few songs uh, with that style. Um, I'd say it goes well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when you're doing a a show like that, then, and kind of uh, what kind of a a room or a vibe do you think this lends best to? Because it's it's just you up there, right? It's not like you have a whole band up there when you do it. So how do you find a way to project the energy of like a full metal feeling band into just you in a room? Like, do you kind of think on that ahead of time? Like, what am I going to do to the sound of this or set up or, you know, how I'm going to make eye contact with people? Do you kind of think about that? I'm up here all by myself. How do I get that wave of emotion all on my shoulders? I mean, to be honest, like when I get on stage, I don't really think about it at all. I just do it. Um, Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I'm not trying to boast or anything, but I, I've, no, been, no, that's... I, I've, I've been told I'm a natural on stage, which I, I'm, it's a huge compliment. Sure. Um, but when I'm on stage, I don't really think about how, like, how am I going to like make eye contact with people? Like what, like, what am I, like, what move am I going to make? Like when there's a note rising in a song, you know, like I, I just, thankfully I just, I just know how to do it. Yeah. No, I, I get it. I understand what you, you know, I don't think I even just do that on stage. Like that's my whole life. I kind of just, I I just don't think about it. It just happens. I just, Mm -hmm. so no, I do know what you mean, but in particular, when you're on stage, I might be thinking about a million things beforehand Mm -hmm. that went into it. But like, I put my hand on the guitar, I stand in front of the microphone and all of a sudden, I don't know, the switch just kind of flips and you just do the thing. Oh yeah. But um, so yeah. The, the last thing I wanted to get to before we talk about an individual song that we're going to spin out to here is I always like to ask, mm-hmm. um, what are a couple things that you're listening to now that aren't, you know, influences from your past, but things that you're enjoying in the present that you think would be cool for people to check out in addition to your album? Well, uh, like I said earlier, Hexablad, 
is about to drop a new album in uh, April, on April 19th, yeah. through uh, Hypnotic Dirge Records. Um, check that out. I think it's going to be an, uh, like an incredible album. Um, so I, I've been listening to their two uh, new singles that they dropped uh, off the album. Um, and another one, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I listen to a lot of new stuff, a lot of older stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of older stuff as well. So, I mean, I've been listening to this band called Kaladin Brood. Um, okay. They're, they're another black metal band. Uh, they do a lot of, like, medieval style as well, which I appreciate. Nice. Um, and I yeah, wondered, too, from some of the other stuff you were saying, if, if you kind of ever did, like, the, the goblin or the dungeon synth or goblin synth stuff that, you know, would be kind of... Uh, it influence it for you as well. Oh, it actually is. Um, and again, Kalen got me into Dungeon Synth. I mean, I knew about it, but I didn't really listen to it. And then he has his own Dungeon Synth project. Uh, actually, I think a few of them, um, I'm pretty oh. sure. And then I'm like, you know what? Like, I'll, uh, I'll give this subgenre a chance, you know? And then um, <clears throat> I, I've been listening to quite a bit of it. Um, I'm kind of picky when it comes to Dungeon Synth. Sure. <clears throat> I'll be honest. Um, I actually, I, I've even done, um, a collaborative track, um, uh, that was released, uh, I think it was early, late last year, earlier this year. Uh, one of my friends down in San Diego, he has a new side project and, uh, first song that he released was actually collaborative, uh, Dungeon Synth track. Very cool. Um, so that was, that was fun to do, but yeah, I would definitely say that Dungeon Synth, uh, uh, is one of those things as well. <laughs> well, Sam, this has been really great uh, getting to talk to you. Um, here at Sun Shadows, we always like to spin out to a track. So off uh, the new album that we've been discussing here, In Memoriam of the Black Wind, if you were to have someone hear a track for the very first time to know you by, mm. what's the one that you think really encapsulates the new sound on this album? It's a hard one because with it always album, is, you know, because uh, yeah. you have 10 fingers and you wouldn't cut any of them off. But yeah, you no, know, I, I just, you know, what's what's the one that, you know, you want us to spin out to so that people here hearing you for the first time, maybe get an idea of what your sound's all about. Honestly, I would say uh, you remind me of fall. Great. That's a great one. All right. So that's that's what we'll uh, spin out to here again. It was a real pleasure having you on the show. Thank um, you so much do you that. have any uh, shows coming up or anything where people can see you uh, in the near future out there in California or in other cities? Yeah. So as of right now, um, I have a show in uh, Costa Mesa, California. That's in Orange County uh, mm -hmm. on March 30th. Uh, I do have uh, pre-sale tickets available if uh, anyone wants to purchase them. Um, that's all I can announce for right now. Um, fair enough. Fair enough. I don't believe there's anything coming up um, early in the summer or any other time in the spring. Uh, I'm having some... Uh, let's just say travel plans being like planned out right now. Okay. All right. Excellent. Well, be on the lookout uh, for Morningstar and you will now be enjoying uh, track 13 on the album. You remind me of fall. And this has been the sounds and shadows podcast here with Morningstar. Sam, thank you very much. And everybody out there in interweb land, keep it dark. Yeah.